Hello and welcome to Lord of the Rings Realms in Exile. Last series we played as Gondor and it was good. We were strong, we were powerful, we defeated the Dark Lord. But this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be playing as a smaller nation, right down at the bottom of the map. And there's not really any great ideals for us. We're not, uh, you know, powered by destiny. We're not fighting off evil. We're just trying to restore what was lost. And that is Umbar. So we're going to be playing as King Kathup Hasgan, and I'm just going to read his description here for those of you who don't know him. Heir to Castamir the Usurper, and master of the great Haven of Umbar, Kathup Hasgan inherited a fractured and broken realm. Their fleets burned and his father slain by the daring Gondorian captain Thorangil. The once mighty Haven has been painstakingly rebuilt, but even now is not fully restored. The hinterlands have slipped from Umber's grasp, and the blood purists spread dissent throughout the Haven. Before enacting vengeance for his forefathers, Kathup Hasgan must first set his own house in order. The third realm in exile stands at the dawn of a new age precarious, but also perched to take advantage of the war coming. So, I see a couple of goals for us here. Number one, restore what was lost. Number two, get revenge. Number three, maybe further down the line, stop the Dark Lord and and save the uh, whole of Middle-earth. But, you know, that's kind of like down the road. Focus mainly on the revenge part for now. So, let's get started. Right, so, this is Umbar. It's way down in the south of the map. We're not really going to be worried about the Gondor Mordor stuff. We're not going to be worried about Isengard and the Riddermark. We're, you know, in a nice quiet area of town. But there are some things that we need to do. If we have a look at Umbar itself, you'll see our main goal to start with is going to be getting this up to scratch, the Great Haven of Umbar. This is going to cost us a lot of money, but we want to upgrade it. We want to get it as far up as we can get it because it becomes very, very, very good the more we upgrade it. And it's going to cost us what? Uh, it's 950 a level, so, well, that'll be, uh, I assume, like three levels, like 3,000 gold. So it's going to cost us a lot more than we have. At 6.4 gold a month, it's going to be a little bit of time. So we need to get bigger to get that to work. We also have some other things. We can get new duchy buildings. And I believe there are other special buildings along here somewhere. Like one of these holdings has some extra stuff. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure which one it is right now. But we'll get to it. I think it might be one of these ones along the edge. So what is what are our initial goals then? If, we, if our first main goal is to upgrade that holding, what do we need to do? Well, I think we should probably start eating some of the small people around here and kind of reclaim some of the land that should be ours. But let's see if we have any decisions to guide us, such as we had on the Gondor series. Um, we can fund Wildman Invasions. Oh, interesting. So this must be why we had so many invasions at one point in the game. It must have been the AI sending them at us. Now that is intriguing. Okay. Uh, we don't really want to do that, but it is an interesting idea. What else do we have? Press the Castamiri claim. So, Castamir was the rightful king of Gondor and justly cast out. We shall restore our rightful place. So you can launch an invasion of Gondor in the name of placing the blood of Castamir upon its throne. Well, that sounds pretty good. We would need to completely control Umbar and have the title of uh, Anadun, which is where... Oh, right, so basically we'd need to have the High Kingdom over here, this Empire title. Well, that's not too bad, so we just need to control this bit of land. And then unify the Havens of Merland and Ramlond, which I believe are up here somewhere. Uh, if I go down into this... Uh, is it this one? Must be this one. Um, I think it's this area, but I think they might be named slightly different. Let, let's see. Uh, you get the Kingdom of Merlond, which currently has no land within it. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's somewhere along here, but it's not actually currently on the map. But if we have a look at it, it is... Um, we need to control these three things. So it's... Ah, it's a bit difficult to see, but it's that one, that one, and that one. So that would allow us to unify these and create a new kingdom up here. Um, which is probably a secondary thing, because we'll get that after we get the Empire. So... Probably get that and then decide, are we strong enough to fight Gondor? If yes, declare war on Gondor. If no, start working on getting that kingdom over there. Anything else for us to do? Not really. We don't have anything, any other major things. Right. Let's have a look here. 
Um, so we have remnant uh, Numenorian blood, which is it's all right. It means we're going to live a little bit longer, but it only adds 20 years to our life expectancy, and we're currently 101. So we're really looking at our children to carry on some of this stuff here. Um, who also have the blood and are married, so we don't really need to worry about what's going on there. Um, are you related to anyone noble? Not really. Okay, cool. Actually, you have land of your own. Oh, right, yes, you have this uh, this little bit of land of your own. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we have another sibling here who controls some more land in Umbar, who is unmarried. So we should probably find uh, him somebody to marry as one of our early goals. Okay. Right, so let's have a look at our dynasty legacy. Um, oh, so we have these pillage and adventure ones at the top there. So, does that mean that we are allowed to raid? That's my next question. Um, if I go in here, pirate traditions. Faithful may lead raids and earn both wealth and glory through sacking enemy lands. Well, that seems intriguing. That's going to help us with the money. Uh, warmonger. Um... At peace opinion instead of offensive war opinion. Ah, right, yes. So if we are not at war, people are going to be very unhappy at us. And we can have a conquest cast a spell against neighboring rulers. So if we were to check somebody like this, we have these, um, I think it's this one. Yeah, I think this one's the one that we get from that. Although we also have conquer duchy, but I think we need to be a higher level. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Or a higher level of uh, fame. And then, uh, what else did we get from this? Hedonistic. Hosting a feast earns piety. Oh, cool. Male dominated dominion of the dark. Forces of evil face when the adulation of the dark doctrine are considered righteous. Okay. I think that's saying that basically um, we're on the side of Mordor right now, which, you know, is fine. Uh, monogamous, divorce disallowed, you're allowed cousin marriage. Okay, so it's all fairly straightforward after that point. Uh, this one's got a little bit extra stuff in here, but I think it's basically just saying that um, it's just setting our opinion of other people, basically. Right, what else do we have? We're Patriarch, we're August, we have Legendary Blade Master, and we're a Great Eminence. So we're very down into the diplomacy side of things, and we're terrible at diplomacy. Well, we're not terrible, but like, our best stats of 14, it's not really the best. Uh, we're allied with one of our vassals, which is fine. Cool. Um, let's have a look at, um, oh right, yes, I was currently, uh, I was in this legacy one. So now we know we can raid, what do we want to do? Uh, we could get increased diplomatic range and receive bonus troops above the cap when adventuring. We could send to the Varengian Guard, I assume that doesn't work because, well, it doesn't exist in this world. Pillage, prowess, naval speed, and prestige and fame from battles, that's actually pretty good. We go war warfare is always nice. Um, this one is not so good, although the feast cost going down would be good if our piety increase. Guile, we're probably not going to be that sneaky. We could be, but we're probably not going to be. Um, yeah, I think we're really looking at uh, sea wolves here. I think that's the most sensible one for us. Oh, wait, do we have enough for another one? We do. Oh, cool. Army loot capacity is good, uh, defender advantage is nice, and max size of heavy infantry regiments up. That seems great. It's also saying that we should focus on heavy infantry. So let's have a look at that uh, when we get there. Right, lifestyle. Uh, we have 20 out of 27. We could carry on down here and try and get Diplomat. What are we at? We've got Ducal Conquest. Ah, that's where we got the Ducal Conquest CB from. Um, yes, yeah, so the other Conquest CB was definitely from our... Um, it was definitely from our religion. Yeah, okay, so that makes sense. Uh, so this would allow us to get foreign affairs, fellow vassal opinion, we don't, doesn't matter, we don't have vassals. Um, we can also get an alliance without a marriage. Alliances grant uh, some extra diplomacy, shorter truces, forced vassalization CB could potentially be okay. Uh, accomplished forger, maybe, and then diplomat there. Okay, so there's some options there. The other option, though, is that we go into something like learning and try and get ourselves to survive a little bit longer. It depends whether we want to lead or whether we want our children to lead. I'm not really too worried about our, um, about whether we lead or not, so I think I'm just going to go for um, this one right here. Plus one diplomacy and some extra prestige per month, just to allow us to uh, keep up constant wars. And then we'll try and get forced vassalage, because it will probably be useful in our current state. Right, uh, what other things does it want us to do? Uh, challenge someone to a trial by combat. 
Absolutely no. Although we do have 18 prowess, which isn't that bad, but I think it's talking about an orc, so probably not. Neighbors can be vassalized. Um, sure. I mean, they just want to be part of our realm. Why would I say no? You want low feudal obligations? Sure. Right, so we got two new vassals. You negotiate an alliance with uh, Prince uh, Casimir. Sure, we'll get that alliance. This prince can marry. Well, we already said we needed to look at it, so let's look at it. Um, is there somebody nearby we would launch an alliance with? Maybe these guys, if we could. Are we, um, we, we consider them a stray? So do you have any daughters? They're all princes. Well, that's going to be a real problem. Anybody else along here have a daughter? Uh, oh, you have a daughter. Unmarried? Yeah, yeah, let's arrange a marriage between her. That's not a daughter. That's what I'm currently uh, figuring out. Oh, wait, I probably can't do it. I probably have to do it from this menu, right? Because he's landed. Yeah, yeah, I have to do it from this menu because he's landed. So what was her name? It was Ziri. Uh, can I sort by name? Absolutely not. Why would you ever want to sort by name? Uh, can I sort by first name Ziri? There we go. That works pretty well. Ah, she's not on the list of people we can marry. Well, that's a problem. Um, all right, she's just not there. There's pretty much nothing we can do about that one there. Uh, instead of that then, how about we look for somebody who has um, some one of these blood traits. Is there anybody who has uh, pure blood? Nah, I didn't think there would be. Uh, strong blood? Okay, so we got Princess Arp, ha Arp Hazel, uh, who is where? What what uh, alliance would that get us? So we get an alliance with these guys. We're aware. Are these these the guys on the island? Uh, yeah. Where, where are you? Yes, they are the guys on the island. Sure, we can get an alliance with them temporarily. That seems okay. Right. That seems like good marriage. So we got Herculean, pretty, and pure-blooded all being passed down. Seems like that's a good thing. They're vastly inferior to us, but that's all okay. Send it through. Right, anything else that we need to worry about? Heir is first in line to inherit some land, but I think that's just from his brother. Few champions. Uh, let's have a look at that. Also, is there anyone here we can replace? Probably you are our most uh, urgent to replace. Yeah, um, we could get you as a champion and put you in as our lore master. Yeah, that seems sensible. You have 38 intrigue. Oh, sorry, 34 intrigue. Uh, but we don't really want somebody who dislikes us doing that. Why do you dislike me? Because I hold you as your duchy and you're ambitious? Yeah, definitely don't put you in charge of anything now that I think about it. That seems like a really bad idea. All right, let's assign uh, this guy. Cool. So he's just doing religious relations to get his piety right now, but he could get his claims, he could convert faiths. All of that seems fairly okay. Steward? Uh, I think you're fine. Chancellor, we'll leave you in there. Spymaster is currently our son and he loves us, so that seems fine. Marshal, yeah, I think we probably have the best people in charge right now. All of these are powerful vassals anyway, so there's not really any real reason to replace them. Assisting ruler, uh, we could get some extra diplomacy if we needed it. We don't really need any particular stat right now, so we'll leave you be. Cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to check here is do we have heavy infantry? These I don't think are heavy infantry. They're free man uh, spears. Okay. Type spearman. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We have a couple of trebuchets and we have some crossbowmen. I didn't really want to raise them, but that's okay. The one I was actually looking for was this button. I just wanted to see what we have. Dark volunteers, is that the one we're looking for? Heavy infantry, they seem pretty good. Or the black uh, Numenorian uh, vanguard. Both of them seem pretty good. Same size, but these guys are um, just a little bit better. Uh, these ones do better at pursuit. These ones do better at screening. Okay. That all seems fairly straightforward. So, like, e w either of those are okay. These are probably slightly better, but they cost slightly more. Armored footmen are just worse. Okay, so we will probably want to grab one of those if we happen to get some money at some point. We also probably want to go and raid at some point, but um, let's wait a couple of seconds. Let the game roll, you know? Ah! Lore. The heir of Castamere. Since the days of the kin strife, Umbar has been the refuge of the blood of Castamere, rightful king of Gondor. However, 
Umbar has been too disunified to truly pose any threat to Gondor. Roughly 30 years ago, the previous king of Umbar, Azul, uh, Azulzir, began to test Gondor's defences. Gondor was not caught unaware, however, and slipping through the defences of Umbar by night, the daring captain Thoringil set the port and the fleet ablaze. Azulzir met him in personal combat as Thoringil covered his men's retreat, but Thoringil was the mightier and slew him. Thus did Cathu Pazgan uh, become lord of um in Umbar, but he inherited not a mighty realm, a dread across all the shores of Gondor, but one freefall. The hinterlands, never truly brought to heel and colonized, swiftly broke away, and the blood purists in Umbar started a riot which further damaged the port, leading to their exile. After many years of careful stewardship, Cathu Pazgan has led Umbar back to a semblance of order, with honeyed words and judicious application of force. But he desires greater honor and glory, and to at last place his family upon the Gondorian throne. His sons are full grown and powerful men, yet there are concerns of a growing rivalry between the two concerning the succession. But first, the hinterlands must be brought to heel. Some of the legates in the hinterlands will accept your overlordship by careful diplomacy, but others will need force. Ah, so that was our vassalization request that he's talking about there. There you go, we have now become larger. Okay, and we got our alliance, and I assume more are willing to be vassalized. Exactly, yes. So we can now vassalize Captain uh, Peter. Let's get him as well. We have formed an alliance, wonderful. We've got that one. I think this might be the one that has a special building. Yes, we can construct uh, the Umbar Citadel if we want to. Um, we can't really afford it right now, and it's not our land, so we wouldn't want to do it, but we could do it, in theory. Uh, we can transfer this guy to the correct person. That seems like a sensible idea to me. And we've actually increased the number of troops we have by about 700. Right. Who doesn't want to join us? You. Why do you not want to join us? Um, let's have a look here. Offer vassalage. Minus 45. Different culture group. Fair enough. How about you? Why, why are you not in? Different culture group. Fair enough. How about you? Wouldn't you know it? It's a different culture group. And you as well? Different culture group. Okay. So, all of these guys are going to need wars for us to take them. Makes sense. Right, let's wait a little bit again. Just to see what pops up. We have an alliance. Unrest in Western Gondor. My lord, there is news of great unrest in the western frontier of Gondor. Perhaps this is an opportunity. These wild men factions are more than eager to raid and harass Gondor's western borders. If we were to fund one of these groups, they could prove valuable to our future places of reclamation. Interesting, so this is why we constantly got wildman wars when we were uh, attacking other people as Gondor. I think what it does is, is if Gondor is at war, give Umbar a decision to fund the Wildman. Oh, but that would then allow it to become available? Um, yeah, okay. Well, we could do it anyway, but interesting. Uh, but we're missing the money. Uh, we don't require the aid of savages to take back what is ours, or we shall fund them. I'll click we shall fund them, but we don't have the money, so it's not. It, it's really just academic there. It just doesn't take away the decision. Right, let's speed it up a little bit. The scorching sun of Harrod. I can feel the sweat running down my face and dripping from my hair. The desert sun does not care. It tortures even those born and raised in these arid lands. Outside, the blazing sun scorches the Harrod Wraith in its unimpeded fury, unfeeling for the lives of men and beasts alike. Slaves and cattle fall dead. Freemen complain about water growing ever scarcer in wells. The people demand that something be done. So I can get mad at them, go, ah, what do you want me to do, get rid of the sun? And we can get heat waves. Okay, so that lowers our account, our holding taxes, which is fairly bad. Uh, and lowers your development growth, so you could in theory have a negative development growth. Um, and it says it's a stewardship challenge against. Okay, interesting. Position troops at the well so no uh, drop is wasted. I'm just seeing where we're at here. Again, it's another stewardship challenge. We would lose some 
it looks like we lose some money as well. Doesn't really tell me what the chances are here. It just appears to change the odds. I don't really think it is connected to your stewardship. I think it probably just affects the odds as well. Or send out scouts to find and secure new sources of water. So it's how bad do we want things to be? Um, well, we can't really afford the scouts, but we could afford to position troops. It gives us a 35% chance of a mild heat wave. And it gives us like a 67% chance that we get major or less, which seems not too bad as a rule. Let's take it. Severe heat wave. Well, that's not good. And with that, Bombshell, I'm going to end the first episode there. Thank you for watching. We haven't done a lot of war this episode, but I imagine from this point onwards, there's going to be a lot of that. There's no people really near us who want peace, and our objectives involve us taking their land, so lots of war. So thank you for watching. Um, as it is the first episode of a series, and I only say it on the first episode, I would appreciate it if you liked, subscribe, comment, all of that sort of stuff, because it helps with the search ranking and it helps the channel grow. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.